you know, when you're playing, you're in the bubble and you're playing week in, week out, you don't really realise the situation you're in and, you know, how privileged it is to be a professional footballer. I remember signing pen to paper and it was a major step to fulfilling your dream of playing for the first team. The moments that I've made in a footballer have been the moments that I've had the most difficult experience on a football pitch. It's not just a game, it's a way of life. Football is that beat that some people will never understand what I feel or why I feel what I feel when I play. Being a professional footballer, it is the best job in the world. When man mit dem Herz dabei ist, dann ist alles möglich. I think my first football memory was Zidane's double in the World Cup final. You know, I used to stand on the terraces and watch the likes of John Barnes and Peter Beardsley. They were two heroes of mine. Uh, when I was younger, I used to try and be like Steven Gerrard. Since I could walk and kick a ball, I absolutely loved it. Going in goal and diving around with my friends, getting ridiculously muddy. My two brothers, me and my sister, running back from Stamford Bridge straight onto the estate and, and kicking the ball with the lads you know, in the pen. Just being with you know, brothers that, that enjoyed the game, it really helped me get involved. My dad used to help me and teach me to shoot with the laces. He used to love that, you know, so every time he was like, Hector, you need to shoot laces. Those are the, the memories that I love the most. I remember my mum going to a parents' evening at school. One of my PE teachers said I wouldn't make it as a footballer. Sometimes I wish I could go back to school and say, like, what are you got to say now, you know? I was on trial at Wolverhampton Wanderers when I was about 13. Uh, they told me not to bother coming back. The best thing is just to smile and do better than what they ever think you can do. You know, my first England trial at 15, I failed. I got a rejection letter. In 2014, I effectively lost the captaincy of England overnight. My starting debut at Borussia Dortmund, that was a struggle for me. It made me realise that I had to work really, really hard if I really wanted to be at the level of the other players in that pitch. 13 to 14, I got dropped down an age group which hit me quite hard. If they see me now, they only see the John Stones plays in the Premier League. They don't realise that you've gone through these tough periods. It was hard to see my friends playing, you know, in their age group and I'm sitting on the bench for them and not getting a game and then the next day playing for the year below. I always see a setback, it's an opportunity for a comeback, it's an opportunity to say, do you know what, I'm going to roll my sleeves up, I'm going to work harder, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. It definitely spurs you on to get to that stage where they are, but also it teaches you a lot about yourself. At such a young age, the heart you've got, the desire. Don't ever doubt yourself because there's enough people in the world that are going to doubt you. Players slip through the net because everyone develops at different rates. I think it's different here in England as well. Sometimes English players are judged very, very young. 14 to 16, I grew physically and knew that it was time to knuckle down. You know, at that age, you're developing and you're trying to become a top player and you're trying to strive to, to get to your dream on that level where you can become a professional at whatever club you're at. Those two years or so were, were critical for me to, to progressing to get a scholarship. Clubs sometimes stop looking so much at a certain age groups, possibly U13, U14. And then at 18 sometimes they're expected to be a first team player. Opinion is a massive, massive thing. You might not fit the system of that particular club. The challenge for the players that are outside the system then is how do you get in? And Jamie Vard is a great example of somebody who did it through non-league. These are players that have had a very different path to success than those boys that have come through the academy. You've got to have resilience, strength of character, and adaptability. Most players will have a trial with us. 35 to 40 percent will get a professional contract. So if they've been bus for a period of time and football hasn't invited them in to a trial, it's really the game saying they're not quite ready at the moment. There's loads of players we could say now, we could name 10 now straight off the bat who have at 16, 17, 18 year old look unbelievable world beaters. But then 21, 22, they're subs in non-league. Talent. But I think in my opinion it's not the most, it's important. Probably it's the most important, but it's not the key point. Everyone has individual skills and their technical ability, but doing the extra mile I think is what makes you stand out the most. I think it's important to improve and get more experience, more calm and the rest comes with time. Du hast andere Aufgaben auf jeder einzelnen Position. Und ich meine, bin ein flexibler Spieler, der auf mehr Positionen spielen kann. Das habe ich, glaube ich, schon öfter bewiesen und auch gezeigt. Ich glaube, ich gehört sicherlich auch irgendwo zu meinen Stärken. There comes a time in your career when the penny's got a drop, where you've got to understand decision making at right poignant moments in the game. When to pass, when to dribble, when to shoot. Game changing moments. Can you be the guy that sits there and takes that responsibility? And the great players do.
Most scouts can see raw talent and ability. They came to me and they said, oh, you, we've scouted you and we want you to train with the proper um, Barcelona Academy. He starts getting an idea that you're good at what you're doing. It wasn't until I was kind of 23, 24 that I realised that I had talent when I actually won International Player of the Year and I thought, I must be OK at this now and I think I probably had a lot of self-doubt before that. No, I never knew that I was better than others, but I had a uma diferença grande entre alguns colegas meus, alguns acompanharam, outros não, mas nunca distingui-me como melhor que os outros, mas sim, trabalhei e dei o meu melhor, por isso agora estou onde estou. Quando eu estava no Rio de Crystal Palace, por exemplo, quando você olhou para alguém como Wilfried Zaha, ele era um jogador de cuff, ele fez coisas que não estavam normalmente estruturadas nas academias. E quando você o trouxe para o Crystal Palace, ele tentou se adaptar à estrutura de fazer coisas. Quite often in football, I think people concentrate on the on the areas that players can't do and, and the things they don't have, and ignore the things that they do have. And, and raw talent and ability will always give you a chance of a career. Physically, now players are really, really good athletes, but technical ability and that little bit of excitement is awesome as well. For the players that we feel are going to go into the pro game, they've got to be fit and, and, and athletic. And then other aspects like their character, their ability to learn. Just their enthusiasm for the game. Da, pa naravno, koji glup, kod glup da odeš ili gde god igra najvažnije biti čovjek i imati dosta prijatelja drugo iz kluba, tako da to je naravno futbol i to je na prvom mestu. Ali naravno, naravno, ovdje su stvarno svi svi dobri ljudi, vrhunski vrhunski ljudi, tako da imamo naravno ono sve uslove za rad i trudimo se da da budemo onako kako treba. I remember breaking into the first team and a few of my friends had, had got their deals and then I was the next guy to get that. To mi bio korak ka dalje karijeri da naravno da bio sam mlad i i sada sam normalno ali imam većeg iskustva tako da to mi bio korak da da napredim kad sam potpisao ugovor sa pred prvim timom Partizana da radim na sebi i naravno da da idem što dalje. Even if you've signed your first contract you know, you still got to get out of bed and you still got to love what you do. This is where the hard work starts. You're not coming to another country at just 16 and getting used to so many things that it makes you realise you have to grow up if you really want to make it. I've played my whole career being semi-professional, so to turn it around and then become professional and that actually to be your job, not trying to manage other things around your football, it's nice to be able to focus on just that. I was very lucky because I had the likes of Robbie Fowler, Steve McManaman, Jamie Redknapp, Jamie Carragher and Michael Owen that had broken before me and they helped me settle in and grow and, and become a regular in Liverpool's first team. Consistency is a huge thing at the top, it's hard to get to a good level but once you get to a certain level you know, there's people who want your place. Bayern de Munich is one of the best clubs in the world, so any player who would like to be here and I, so young, I still feel very happy to be here. In 1998, make me debut, like a boy in, in, in a man's shirt and going into a man's game. So to actually get there and experience it, it was a special day. Professional debut was against uh, West Brom. Had to come on as a as a centre mid. Had a couple of shots on target. You know, I remember some of the players saying, "Hector, defend, defend." But you know, it was my first game, so obviously I was excited. The um, World Cup getting the bronze medal there, winning the FA Cup and the double and doing the quadruple with Arsenal. I was involved in the quadruple team with Arsenal. I was 16 at the time. Every kid's dream to, to play in the Champions League and to win it and to actually have achieved that was an amazing feeling. I mean, I always wanted to win the league and when I did that at Liverpool, it was something that you know, I was really proud of. Captain in my country, captain in Team GB, uh, something I probably didn't even dare to dream that I'd do as a young girl. Last year was my best year in my career because we win. The Champions League and the Euros. Being picked to be part of the World Cup squad, something I never ever thought I'd be doing. In order to be a national uh, team player in any selection, you have to be very well prepared mentally, technically and tactically, and physically, of course. The thing that stands out in my mind is singing the national anthem, spotting my mum and dad in the crowd, and seeing them crying. You know, that'll stay with me forever. Waiting for that moment for him to say, Delhi, go get warm. Just enjoying the experience, being with them players and getting to know them all and just wanting to go out there and play for my country. You're with the idols of world football and want to impress everyone else, so you're probably trying a bit too hard. Of course, it's good when you win the Champions League, the league, Golden Ball, the Golden Boot, but when you win something for your country, it's completely
completely different. Assisting the winning goal in the World Cup final, I don't think anything can beat that. Starting in a World Cup game, that was a really, really special feeling and you know the build-up and the anticipation, the nation getting behind you was actually really special and something that I'll never forget even though the tournament didn't go particularly well. And the biggest thing is you're pulling on the English strip and playing for every English person. That in itself is a big honour and pride. Being captain of England is definitely a dream of mine. If it ever came about, I'd be speaking to previous captains and getting experience off them. I think what makes a good captain is someone who can lead and someone who dies for, for their teammates. Well, I was a totally different captain to obviously how keen he was. A lot of people around the dressing room that look to you. I get more motivation from helping the players in my team who haven't won yet. That's my biggest drive. My work ethic was something that I felt that would help the team. You've got to take responsibility and do everything in your power to get results. Hopefully players look at that and, and try and follow it. I always remember something that my dad said to me when I was a very young age saying, you know, this game, football, you get out of it what you put in. You were fortunate to have talent and getting paid for something you love doing. All you got to do is perform for 90 minutes. Not every game's perfect, so you're going to have bad games. Don't get down on yourself. Football's a short career, so just make the most of it. Keep your feet on the ground, keep working hard and keep pushing yourself. The main thing is to have fun as a, a kid. I still enjoy my football, even it, it, it's a job. Yeah, a lot of people telling you that you can't do things. I just think it's important that you know, you have confidence in yourself. I never lost the focus on football. Get your dreams and make sure you, you set your targets and you go and achieve your goals. Man sollte immer das tun, was man liebt. Wenn man mit dem Herz dabei ist, dann ist alles möglich. Just be yourself. If you're a leader, become a leader. Doesn't matter who else is on that dressing room, who else is around you, because at the end of the day, that's what's going to make you the player you are. You never know everything. You can feel, oh, you know, he's giving me too much, or he's telling me too many things that I do wrong, but sometimes it's for the good. To go out and enjoy being outside. If you put in time and effort, things are going to work out for you. You know, when you're playing, you're in the bubble and you're playing week in, week out, you don't really realise the situation you're in and you know how privileged it is to be a professional footballer at the top level. So my advice to people out are in it now to enjoy it and cherish every moment because you certainly miss it when you come out. Make sure that you're doing everything today to make yourself better tomorrow. There's some really, really incredible experiences to be had as a footballer if you do it right. So you can't take anything for granted, you just got to work every day to improve, to get better. It's really hard to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay there.